Zotero is not just for research papers and academics wanting to reference things. I use it to capture videos, tweets, and blog articles alongside my academic papers. It is a core tool in my capture process, and it integrates well with Obsidian, my main notes app, which is why it is a central tool of my workflow. I have an entire module in my course about it, link in the description, but by going to the Zotero website, you can download the app for free. You will then be able to store documents, attachments, and items to your computer while syncing to the Zotero cloud. You may also want to download the connector, which is the same as any other browser clipper. It means that when you are on a website, a paper, or video, you can push the button and it will automatically add the information into Zotero for you. When you look at Zotero, this is my active library, on the left side, the brown folders identify the library or group library, basically the main folder of items, then the folders underneath, which can have loads of subfolders. You can see I have one top level folder that has loads of folders in it, but the other folder looking icons with the magnifying glass are advanced searches, which I'll get to later. Then there are four default sections, my publications, which is where you put your work, duplicate items, which automatically finds duplicates for you to merge, unfiled items, which shows you all the items that don't have a folder, and then the bin. Moving down, we have the feeds, which are RSS feeds, basically notification channels, or in my case, mainly academic journals. But I do have some blogs in there, Forte Labs, James Clear, and a YouTube channel, Veritasium. When a new blog, article, or video is published, the feed goes dark. There is something unread in the feed, just like your emails. I can then just add it to my library from there. Carrying on, we have the tags pane. These are all custom tags, but when you use the connector or just add items, it can generate automatic tags for words and topics that are related to the items tagged. You can go to the bottom of the tag pane to change those settings, which I do because I only want my tags. In the middle, we have the main view, which shows the results of the search. I say that because clicking a folder, advanced search, feed, tag, or by using the search bar at the top changes the view. And in the view, it will show the item results of the search. On the right, there is an information window, which all relates to the selected item, but before covering all of that, another thing to note is that when you open a PDF, a tab will appear at the top to view the PDF inside of Zotero, which has a different display I will cover later on. So items. You can manually add items, which involves you adding in all the information manually, something I don't do often. You can add items from an identifier, which works the same as the connector, but you need to be in Zotero to push the button and enter the information, be it an ISBN number, DOI, etc. But the main way I add items is with the connector. It is the quickest and easiest. An important note is that the connector will automatically select the item type for you, which changes the information you can put on the item. An attachment item doesn't give any options. Blog post adds things like date, authors, or link, and a whole host of other different item types add and remove various options. But tags are different. I personally leave Zotero to pick the item type for me, but it is worth noting that you can change it. To use the connector, Zotero does need to be open on your device, and it will save the video, blog, paper, etc. to the open folder, which can be a subfolder, or your main library. I just save it to my main library and tag it later unless I'm researching for a specific project in mind, in which case I have the subfolder open, so it defaults there. Some of the items, mainly journal articles or blogs, will have attachments inside them, maybe a PDF or a snapshot of a website. I often use arrows keys and hotkeys to navigate and bulk change things, but organizing the main window information means I can see what items have PDFs. I cover my entire process of capturing information in my course, linked in description, but a trick I use with blog posts is to save them as a PDF and put them into Zotero. The reason why will become obvious later on. Now the connector adds most of the information automatically, often more information than I need, but it doesn't do anything with tags, apart from the automatic ones. So I can add a tag from the information pane, drag the item over the tag and add it that way, or, if I have assigned a number, I can use the number on my keyboard. There are nine numbers, so nine numbered tags, which are also the ones you see showing up next to the items in the main window. To add an emoji tag, you need to create a tag, add your desired emoji in the text box on Windows, I think it's the Windows key and the full stop. At the same time, Mac is Control Command Space, I think. At the same time, you may need to confirm that. 
Then you can just add the tag like any others. In my case, I use the numbers so they show up next to the item. Pushing the tag in the pane will change the search, but you can set up advanced searches by going to edit, advanced search, and adding in conditions. This is an example of one of my advanced searches, but I cover more about my personal organization again in my course because there is an infinite amount of searches available. And mine do change and my course is updated as my workflow changes, unlike this video as it is published now. When reading a paper or blog in PDF form, you will get a different heads up display. On the left, a thumbnail view with a view with a list of highlighted points and a table of content if the paper or article has one that Zotero can identify, but I mainly stay on the highlights view anyway. Across the top, you can see the option to highlight words, add a note to a section, or create an area selection, which I normally use for images and tables. Each highlight can be different colors, so you can filter them in the side view and jump straight to that part of the PDF. That is what you will see me do in my paper reviews going down the paper from red highlight to red highlight. You can edit the page number, the highlighted text, and add notes to any highlight in the PDF. An important note here is that each highlight is unique and has a unique ID, so when you export the notes, it will create a link to jump you straight back to where you came from if you use the link. Something I go into more detail about in my course for Obsidian specifically, but the link works in most exports. On the right side, there is the item information, tags and related panel, which is where you can relate a paper, blog or any item to another. So if I'm reading a blog and think it relates to a research paper, I can make that relation inside of Zotero. I personally do my linking in Obsidian as part of my distill process, but the option is still in Zotero. The other panel is for all notes, which can be past exported highlights of this PDF or any note you have in Zotero that you can search for. Again, I don't use this function much because I have my Obsidian note linked to the Zotero item and do my linking in Obsidian. But for those using something like Apple Notes that doesn't have those linking features, you can do that linking in Zotero. Once you have added highlights to the PDF, you can right click on the item and add note from annotations, which will automatically export the highlights into a note in the item. The note can then be edited in Zotero, changing formatting, highlighting, adding links or citations for future reference. I'm sure you can guess by now, but I export the notes into Obsidian via a hotkey and do the formatting there. Some other discussion points worth noting is that Zotero works on tablets and iPads, so you can use Zotero Cloud Sync for items. However, if the cloud storage is maxed out, you can either purchase more storage or clear the cloud storage and keep the attachments locally stored, which is what I have done because I don't need access to all of my items on the cloud. As for a backup, I use a plugin called Zotfile and store the PDF files on my external hard drive, so locally stored. There are loads of other plugins you can use with Zotero to alter, change, and enhance the options with the tool. My personal plugin set you can see right there on screen, but bear in mind, plugins and Zotero are developed all the time, so keep an eye on the published date of this video. If you do go looking for one of these plugins, the name may have changed. For those academics that have either stuck around or jumped to this part of the video, the citation feature in Zotero is a lifesaver when writing manuscripts. I don't use the word integration because I write in Obsidian and use Pandoc to export my citations, but I'm going to go through the word integration in this video because that is what most people will use. First, you need to enable the Zotero word add-on. An important point to note here is that if the information in the item inside of Zotero is wrong or missing, the citation put in the manuscript will also be wrong or missing. I've missed the date a few times, so just a heads up. Once enabled, when you open up Word, you should see a Zotero tab. Once you have clicked in the tab, there are two main options to pay attention to. Add citation, which opens the search of Zotero library for you to add a citation after selection of your citation style of choice, or add bibliography. And you will need a citation in the document beforehand, which will then automatically add and update a bibliography as you add more citations in the page. If you can't find your citation style, go to Edit, Preferences, Cite, Get Additional Styles, or use the Style Editor to alter a style that is close to the one you're looking for. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below and I will try and get to them. I recognize there was a lot of look at my course comments in this video, but once a video is published, I can't change it. I can only publish a new video, whereas my course is updated as updates are released and my workflow changes. 
It also covers the interactions between tools rather than just the one tool, which also changes. The most recent being the citation plugin for the Zotero integration plugin inside of Obsidian.